I thought that most people use the technique, which is very tedious to integrate the W5500 module with the STM32. And so I searched for a method and I finally found one, which lets you basically interface the W5500 module with almost any microcontroller, but as long as it has the SPI peripheral. So I'll be using the F756ZG. Yes, I know it already has got the Ethernet module, but uh, that's the only board I, that has the UART connected to the ST-Link port. So, that I have. So um, this is the connection, nothing special here. I basically connected the SPI pins and the chip select pin and 3.3 volt to VCC. So I will enable the SPI3 because I connected it to SPI3. So I'll go here to SPI3 and I'll select MOSI and then MISO and then S clock. Then I'll go to PA3, which will be the chip select line. Then I'll go to PD8 and PD9 to enable the UART for uh, debug debugging. And then I'll be enable enabling the user LED, which is PB7. Now I'll enable the SPI3, select full duplex master because we want to send the data and receive it um, at the same time. Now we need to set it to 8 bits, obviously, and let's lower down the frequency because I'm using a breadboard, so I'll select it here 16. Uh, which is pretty fine for this project. Then I'll enable the UR3, which is over here. Yep. And then I enable the oscillator as well as the serial wire. And we have set up everything that we need. Now generate the project. In order to generate the UI that we'll be using, so I'll be able to control the LED from a user interface, you'll go to uh, Mongoose Wizard. So go to Google and search for Mongoose wizard. Go to the first link and go to settings. Uh, we won't need the MQTT, uh, Modbus TCP and this stuff, so just disable them. And also we don't need the HTTPS for this video. Now go to Web UI Builder and let's say I don't want the developer node. I've already made a video on how to use this uh, framework, which basically generates a UI <laughs> quite fast. So um, delete it. Also, I don't want to see the status panel and I also don't want to see the uptime. And that's basically it. Now go to code and select your board over here and Qbyte E. But for now it doesn't matter the environment because we will only need some files. So download the project as a zip folder because you will need some files like this. Then I go to its project location and I need to um, extract default the file as well. So. I'll extract it. It's not something complicated, so just follow along because it won't take too much. And I'll open the Qbyte E, go to wizard, core, source, and copy the following files. Mongoose.c, mongoosefs, glue, and implementation. Copy them and paste them into the source directory and also do it for the include directory. So go to inc and copy the mongoose.h, conf mongoose.config, and glue.h. Copy them and include them in the include folder. Now, we need to enable the um, Mongoose Manager functionality. So I've already made some videos on how to uh, do this. So check them out if you haven't seen them. So basically I'm enabled the MGR and then I'm um, pulling for the, for the internet events. So I'll say MG, MGR, poll like this, address of MGR, and then the period which will be 100. Um, so then I include the required header files, which is mongoose.h and mongoose.config.h um, as well as the mongoose.glue.h. And let's see if you, we are getting errors. And yes, we are. Let me see the error. Yep, uh, we didn't, didn't write the mgmilis function, which basically takes care of the time. So I'll go to user code begin zero. Also, you'll need the uh, retargeting function, which will send your data via the SCNing port. And also, we will need three SPI functions, one for sending and retrieving the data at the same time, and two for basically um, selecting the CS line and deselecting it. So uh, these are the SPI functions. It's not something complicated. Basically, you have the SPI begin, 
SPA3 and the SPA send, which basically sends and retrieves the data at the same time. Uh, basically, that's how the SPA protocol works. You send some data in and you get something out of it. Um, now, uh, go to Mongoose config.dh because we need to tell Mongoose that we're using the W5500 and not the STM32F. So, um, right here, STM32, uh, no, MG enabled driver W5500. And also, you need to define um, MG enabled. Port 6 fs to zero because you're running to some errors because you're using um, the cube IDE and uh, you can build the project now and we are again running into errors um, let me see yeah ng mg random we don't need the mg random function so we'll just delete it and i'll build it, build it again and it basically works uh, now go to main.c and we have to write some um we need to we need to initialize the TCP IP stack independently because you're using the SPI and not the default settings. So I'll say over here, uh, start um, MG and TCP IP, TCP IP, SPI, S, SPI user equal, um, the begin function will be basically the SPI begin, which will be begin the SPI transaction, then the end, which will be the SPI end and the txn which will be the actually no uh, txn like like this uh, which will be spi sent and the spi data which is is basically a spi structure which holds the spi pins but we don't need it so i'll say uh, y plus null like this now we need to init uh, initialize the tcp ip stack so i'll say um, struct no like this struct mg tcp TCP IP uh, MIF from Mongoose, network, uh, Mongoose interface. We'll set the MAC address. So we'll say MAC uh, equal, um, let's say in hex, OX11 and then OX22 and then OX11 and then OX22 and then OX11 and then o OX22. Like it's something completely random. Then I'll say that IP, which would be um, M MG. Which, done, which converts the byte order from the host order to the network order. So I'll say mgu32, which converts the uh, four, data, four values into the un32t type. So I'll say um, 1i2, then 168, 137, and the IP will be, I don't know, 30. And then I'll say over here um, the gateway. So it will be one item one six eight one three seven dot one because that's that's the IP of the, my USB to Ethernet converter and then I say over here uh, the gateway sorry no the mask the mask mask and here it will be the gateway so I'll say gateway like this and then here we have two five five two five five two, two five five and then zero now I'll say the now I have to tell the TCP IP stack that we're using the SPI driver so I'll say driver data equal address of the SPI user and then we have to tell the mongoose library that we're using the W5500 library so I'll say dot uh, driver equal um, mg tcp tcp ip um, driver W5500 and also this implementation works with almost any microcontroller as long as you have the SPI protocol available and the W5500 module. So that's basically it. Now you need to enable the TCP IP stack. TCP IP, no, init, and the address of the manager and the address of the MIF. Now let's configure it as the HTTP server. So I'll say mg HTTP listen, and then I'll say address of the MGR HTTP uh, 0.0.0.80, and then the HTTP hand, event handler. It is it is defined in the implementation file. It basically takes care of all the user requests to the server. So I'll say ng event handler, then that as the additional parameter. Um, that's basically it. Now I'll include the implementation file. So I'll say over here include mongoose implementation. That's it. Now I'll build it. 
and we're getting tons, tons of errors. Uh, I should have written it like if, my bad. If like this, let me see. Are we still getting errors? And yes, we are. Um, yeah, I need. What did I do wrong here? Like I'm getting. Oh, I have to include the um, fs.c. Yep, my bad. Uh, mongoose fs.c. If you're wondering what does this function uh, header file contain, if you go to here, you'll see that the v1 basically holds the UI dashboard in byte format, and this is actually compressed as a JC byte. So I will run it and I open real term. I'll go to 5500, yeah, like this. I open it again, I clear like this. Let's wait and see if we're getting something. I'm not getting anything on the terminal. I open real term again and reset it. And let's wait. Yep, the network is up. I'll go to uh, to the browser and I'll type here 192.168.137.30. I'll wait a little for things to establish, and we should be prompted prompted to wait on authentication tab. Let's wait a little and we're not getting anything. Oh, actually we are. Um, so I'll say here admin because the username and the password is admin. I'll sign in. I'll include, oh my bad. Yep, like this. Admin, why is it not logging? I think I will reset it. Yep, like this. Admin, admin. Yep, like this, it works. And that's basically it. Now let me show you how you can control an LED with uh, these buttons. So all you have to do is to go to, um, to the glue file, which basically takes care of all the user defined functions. So go to, um, let me see, where is it? Um, glue file, um, yeah, glue.c over here. And you have to go to glue set LEDs, and whenever the we call, whenever we press that button, uh, basically the glue set LEDs will be called. So I'll say over here, um, hal GPIO right, no right, yeah, like this GPIO B, because you're using the B7, and then yeah, GPIO pin seven, and then the state will be the data and the LED one value. And now you need to go to uh, mongoose.h and include the main.h because we need the GPIO library. So I'll say main.h and I basically build it. Again, I will run it. Okay, now I will re reload the page and let me see. Yep, um, now I'll log in, admin, admin. Okay, and I press in the button. As you can see, I mean, I cannot show you better, but if I go here, if I zoom in like this, I think you can see it. So if I press it again, it's turned off. And if I press it again, it's turned on. That's basically it. If you're interested in learning more about embedded systems, I have a free school community. You can check it, check it out here. You have the link in the description. I'll be hosting webinars in there. And also if you, can, if you have any questions related to this field, you can type here in the chat something related to uh, your problems. So I'll see you later.